Hi again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to part two of the Axel series uh, videos for the Escort. Uh, apologies for the length of time it's taken me to get this video out. Uh, I hope you can understand that life is pretty crazy with this uh, COVID-19 being as it is. Uh, but we'll jump straight into it. Um, we're talking Axel widths, and we're talking about uh, axles that came on the Escort Mark 1 and Mark 2. Now, if you've got a UK spec axle or you've sourced one, the most common axle you're going to come across and the axle you probably have in your car is an English axle. This measures 48.5 inches and it came on the Escort Mark 1 and Mark 2. This is for an unarched Escort because as standard they came unarched. Um, so this is the length you're going to have. 48.5 uh, inch axle limits wheels to around 7 inches wide. Uh, the axle, as I mentioned in part one of the video, was good for around 130 to 150 horsepower. Uh, the axles are reliable but can bend on rough stages, so that's something to consider if you're using uh, or want to use an English axle for rallying. Uh, aftermarket parts are available, including the LSDs. Uh, but there is a big problem with these. The wheel bearings can slacken, causing the drive shafts to slide out of the axle casings. That sounds pretty drastic, and it can be pretty drastic. Uh, we'll talk about some preventative measures uh, and how to correct that uh, shortly. So the English axle. If you want one of these uh, and you didn't have one on your Escort Mark 1 and Mark 2, you can try and source one that did come off an Escort Mark 1 and Mark 2. It measures 48.5 inches long. But an English axle also came on, on a Cortina Mark 1 and Mark 2. And I do believe, from what I've researched, it also measured around 48.5 inches wide. Uh, an English axle also came on a Capri, <clears throat> not to be confused with the Atlas axle that you actually want that came on a Capri. There was an English axle on the smaller engine uh, Capris on the Mark 1, uh, and that was the Mark 1 with the 1.3 and the 1.6 uh, litre engines, and they came with a 50 inch wide English. They also came on an early Mark II Capri, smaller engine ver variants as well, at 1.3 and 1.6 litre, and they had an axle width of 52 inches. Uh, an English axle also came on the Anglia 105E and the Prefect 107E. Uh, I didn't do 100% research on them because I, it wasn't really something that I was interested in getting, but I do believe from my limited knowledge that the axles were actually smaller than the ones that came on the Escort. Uh, and that's no bad thing. We'll talk about uh, the benefits of shortening uh, your axle uh, very shortly. So if you are after an English axle, uh, those are the avenues you want to be looking down to try and source one. Um, the English axle then can be retrofitted with disc brakes, utilizing available kits. Depending on the kit, the axle may be up to 8mm wider than normal. And that's just to allow for the disc brake and the mounting uh, hardware and everything else. But this further reduces usable wheel width on an unarched Escort. You may want to consider reducing your axle width to 47.5 inches to allow up to 7 inch wide wheels. Offset dependent with no issues. So basically what that's saying is the standard English axle limits you to around a 7 inch wide wheel. Uh, and if you plan on using uh, discs on the back of your axle, then you're going to eat into that 7 inches, basically reducing you down to about a 6 inch uh, wheel. Or depending on your offset, you might be able to squeeze a 7 inch if you start rolling your arches. But that's something you want to consider if that's the path you want to go down. Um, now, English axles are prone to bending. Uh, the rally prep manual suggests reinforcing the axle casing. If you're not familiar with the rally prep manual, if you just go into Google and type in Escort uh, Rally Preparation Manual on Google, I think the first link that will come up there is from Double G Motorsport, and it will give you a link in PDF format to the rally prep manual. The rally prep manual was prepared back in the 70s by somebody, and that's why I don't really want to give a link here because I don't know who owns the copyright for that. I don't know what the implications are of using that manual. So you can go and find it yourself. It does exist. But there's loads of chapters in there about how to basically create a Group 4 rally prepped escort from basically a road-going variant that came out of the showroom. Uh, and it's all the tips and tricks, although some of them are pretty old school now and old dated and we've got one technology that uh, does away with a lot of the stuff they talk about. But certainly if you're interested in that, you can go and find it. Uh, they do talk about the English axle bending during uh, rough rally stages. So if you are rallying with an English axle, you may want to consider reinforcing the axle by using reinforcing bars welded from the diff housing to just before the spring seats. For obvious reasons, you don't want to impede on the spring seats because then you won't be able to get your springs back on. But then if you're not using springs and you're using coilovers, <clears throat> then yeah, mount it wherever you want. But that's something for you to consider and think about. 
Uh, going back to the, <coughs> the start where I mentioned that uh, the axle, drive shaft, might slip through slackened bearings on the English axle. How it works is uh, the bearing is an interference fit on the drive shaft. So the bearing is pressed onto the drive shaft uh, and then there's like a retaining plate that basically holds the bearing in and then screws into your axle flanges. And basically that holds the bearing into your axle. Now, if your bearings start to get a little bit worn or the interference fit isn't as tight as it should be because you've gone through hundreds of sets of bearings, then your drive shaft can actually start to slip out of the bearing. Now, obviously, that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty risky. It, you know, you could end up losing your whole wheel if the whole drive shaft snaps and then comes out of the bearing. Then you're going to lose a wheel. Uh, so there's a few things that they talk about. One of them is mentioned in the rally prep manual. It's basically trying to add a spot of weld, nothing too uh, penetrative that's going to like eat into the casing of the bearing and heat it up and distort it, but just like a spot of weld on the inner race of the bearing to the drive shaft itself, just to basically stop the drive shaft from slipping out. Uh, when it comes to changing the bearings, obviously it's a bit more involved. You're going to have to grind the weld off. Where you, they talk about it in the in the rally prep manual, using a cold chisel just to knock it off. So you can you can sense from that that the weld isn't too crazy. It's just something to stop the bearing from uh, slipping out the shaft. But more uh, more modern solution is a retaining collar, and I'll drop a link in the description to one that I found online. Uh, basically that slips over your drive shaft on top of the bearing in a race to basically tighten up against the axle just to give it some more friction or some of the collars even have like a retaining grub screw that grow through the middle to grip onto the axle uh, or the drive shaft to stop that from slipping out so that is something to consider if you are using an english axle for fast road use or just rally use uh, they're a good axle but there is a few uh, few issues with them and um, those are the uh, those are the ways to, to solve them the next axle we're going to talk about is the Atlas axle. Uh, this is the most kind of common axle uh, that's now used on rally escorts, uh, and it was, the, it was the axle that was used back in the day uh, on the works rally cars. Uh, the Atlas axle then came <clears throat> in standard form on an escort, although in very rare cases on European escorts. Uh, it measured 48.5 inches and again that limits you to a 7 inch wide wheel on the back covered on an arched escort. Uh, the Atlas axle has a sl slightly larger crown wheel and pinion, larger tubes and stronger casing, larger shafts and bearings, excellent reproduction and aftermarket parts and we're not just talking about bearings and LSDs with this, uh, these whole axles now are being reproduced from 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 nothing so we'll, we'll talk about that in video four i think we're going to look at the group four axle and what's available but basically you can get a brand new casing brand new pig's head a brand new brand new everything when it comes to the atlas axle everything's reproduced on these things now uh, and as i say the axle this axle was used by the works rally cars and the works rally teams back in the day in the 70s so sourcing an atlas axle if you are after one then you want uh, ideally one that came off an escort mark one uh, but as I say, they're extremely rare. They only came on European Escort Mark 1s and they measured 48.5 inches. So you're probably not going to find one of them. So you need to be looking at some of the other avenues that are available. Uh, and they are the Capri Mark 1 3 litre. Uh, that came with a 50 inch Atlas axle. Uh, point to note is that is the one that was used specifically on the Works Valley cars, although it was bolstered up into what's more commonly known as the, the Group 4 axle. But certainly the, the, the 50 inch casing was what was used uh, for the Works Rally cars. Um, but again, it came on a Mark 1 Capri. So again, uh, availability is, is pretty limited now. And people that do have them generally want to keep them and, and use them on their period correct rally cars and aren't really in the business of selling them. So trying to find one is tough. The Capri Mark 2 and Mark 3, uh, the smaller engine, oh no, sorry, the, the 1.6 2 litre and V6 models came with a 52 inch axle. Um, now this is the one that's more commonly used on arched escorts uh, because solely because it was more uh, readily available uh, and you can still pick these up on uh, auction sites and, uh, and forums and used car parts quite readily although they'll probably be in a, a state of disrepair and you have to pay quite a lot of money to have them reconditioned but certainly you can get hold of them still and that was the 52 inch variant the Atlas Axle also came on a Cortina Mark 3, 4 and 5 that came on the 2 litre and 2.3 litre. 
It also came in, in some form on a Transit and a Sierra-based P100 pickup. So there is a, a lot of Atlas axles out there, but not all of them are going to fit your Escort. And we'll talk about that shortly as well. So we'll just jump straight into the common names you're probably going to come across when you're looking for an Atlas axle. The first one here is a Baby Atlas. This was the very rare one. This one is the one that came on the Eurospec Mark 1 Escorts. It measures 48.5 inches, which is the same as the English axle. Uh, again, it limits your wheel width to 7 inches and consider reducing the width to allow for disc brakes if you're going to run one of these on your run arched escort. Uh, the Baby Atlas measures 48.5 inches. The second one is a narrow Atlas. This came standard on a Mark 1 uh, 3 litre Capri. Again, very rare, but this is the one you kind of want to get hold of if you're after a period correct rally car. Measures 50 inches. Uh, it has small, smaller wheel bearings and thinner half shafts, but this didn't affect the strength. It was still a very strong axle, uh, and it was used by the works rally teams. It was actually so strong that they didn't used to carry a spare axle in uh, in the works vans when they were out on stage. Uh, they never had any issues with the axles, um, apart from one very famous incident actually where they uh, they broke a diff out on stage and they actually uh, stole a diff out of a spectator's uh, capri uh, and you can you can look at that video on youtube as well it's quite funny uh, but that's the narrow atlas measures 50 inches uh, and then you've got the full size uh, full width axle which is the most common atlas axle available and we mentioned why that is measures 52 inches standard on most mark two and three capris measures 52 inches and works well with arches and you can go up to uh, eight or nine inch uh, maybe even a 10 inch wide wheel depending on how big your arches are uh, but that's the one that's most commonly used now it's worth noting both uh, both for the english axle and the atlas axle if the axle didn't come off um off an escort originally then it will require some modification to both the spring seat saddles and the radius arm brackets if utilized and it says no the spring seats will need to be welded in such a way as to give desired differential pitch angle and the rally manual quotes four degrees so there's a lot going on here so the first thing will we'll pop up here is basically uh, the brackets where do they need to be uh, here's a diagram taken from the rally prep manual, so I'm not 100% sure. Don't uh, don't hold me to account for this. You can certainly use this as a starting point to go out and figure out if this is correct or not, or have a look in the rally prep manual. This is taken from there, but it's talking about the position of the brackets on the axles themselves, and this is based for an Atlas axle only because it's got this flange here. Uh, I don't think yeah, certainly the uh, the English axle doesn't have that flange. So I'm not 100% sure if this is correct for, for an English, but certainly on an Atlas axle, the four link bracket will be nine inches or 22.86 centimeters from the flange. The center of the spring seat measures 12.5 inches or 31.75 centimeters from the flange. And the upright mount, whether that's for a damper or for a coilover, is gonna be 14 inches, which is 35.56 centimeters from the axle flange. So the other thing I mentioned was the differential pitch angle. So what is this? Basically, you can see here, we've got a differential from a side profile. If you can imagine a, an imaginary line running uh, horizontal through the differential uh, from the middle of the diff cover all the way through to the, the nut on the output flange, uh, basically that center line is inclined four degrees up from, from horizontal. Basically, you can see here there's four degrees. Uh, and why four degrees? Well, the rally manual refers to it as being four degrees, but this four degrees was set because generally that was the angle of the engines. Now, why is that important? Well, the engine is connected to the gearbox and that's all fixed. So the gearbox output flange will also generally be around four degrees. So they talk about setting the differential pitch angle at four degrees so that it matches the output flange of your gearbox. And why is that important? Well, you can see here, uh, I've tried to pit picture that uh, as best I can. These angles need to be correct to prevent basically any uh, prop shaft vibrations or out of phasing. Now, it's all a very uh, ex an exact science and it's outside of the scope of this video, but I want to let you know that it is a thing so you can go out and do your own research on it. And I'll also drop a link in the description to a very handy video that I found many years ago from some scientists somewhere 
talking about prop shaft angles and phasing and basically to eliminate any or to reduce as much as possible any prop shaft vibration you want the output flange of your gearbox to be at the same angle as the input flange of your differential so although the rally manual is quoting four degrees if you've installed the engine yourself into the car you're using custom engine mounts or engine mounts that uh, have been adjusted or you're hard mounting the engine to the chassis and you've made your own uh, chassis mounts and basically before you go and set your spring seats to make sure your differential is at four degrees pitch you want to measure your output flange on your gearbox to see what angle that is and then try your best to uh, make your input flange of your differential at the same angle now to further complicate this story your differential will move up and down obviously during suspension uh, compression and extension uh, depending on how you've got your rear end set up if you're using the link bars um, the diff angle may actually change under compression and, and extension of the rear suspension so this is something for you to bear in mind uh, you can google the best kind of setup so specifically if you're into drag racing i know a lot of guys uh, tend to put the pitch angle slightly down so that when the car is under full squat under full load under max power transfer that the diff angle will actually be in the right position to get maximum torque through the prop shaft um, but it's just again something for you to consider i'm not going into it in this video because it's far outside of my understanding it's just something for you to consider however what i will do is drop a link in the description to a video that frank Kelly has uh, recently released talking about his uh, escort mark ii specifically his axle and uh, the setup and he talks about the pitch angle of the differential and he said he was saying that he's tried different pitch angles under varying different conditions and nothing really seems to make that much difference the most difference comes from actually using the different holes in the link boxes and the bars themselves um, it will affect how, kind of how much traction you can put down uh, it'll either cause a car to squat or not squat depending on what holes you're using but you can watch that video take from that what you will I found it quite fascinating uh, and if you don't know who Frank Kelly is then I suggest you just bang his name in on YouTube and you'll find uh, an Irish guy driving an Escort Mark II as if he's stolen it literally on the ragged edge all the time he's got a beautiful beautiful Mark II and he absolutely drives the wheels off that thing so yeah definitely give him a look uh, look up watch his video and take from that what you will so that brings us on to the last section of this video uh, i've tried to keep it as short as i can but i'm rambling here we're nearly up to 20 minutes long i do apologize uh, this last section is going to be talking about custom axles and that's a custom axle whether it's going to be one you're ordering from a uh, from a company who's going to remake an axle for you or whether you're, you're going to modify an axle off um, a Volvo or something else uh, hopefully with the information contained within this video and certainly in the next video um, you should have a good idea of what kind of lamps you need uh, in order to get it fitted underneath your Escort uh, but regarding custom axles, if you're after a standard replacement axle for an unarched Escort, then you maybe want to be looking at around a 48.5 inch. Although if you are considering using disc brakes at the back, you might want to be looking at 47.5 inches to give more clearance and wheel options. Um, if you've got an arched Escort, um, similar to what was uh, on the Capri there, the standard Atlas uh, axle for an arched Escort is around uh, 52 inches. Uh, so you want to be looking at a 52 inch axle again if you're going to be using disc brakes you might want to reduce that slightly and uh, lastly we're looking at uh, the option I went with which is basically uh, custom completely custom group 4 axle uh, and this is a fully floating axle and we'll talk about what a fully floating axle is in video 4 when we talk about a group 4 axle uh, but these not rated atlas axles quite often come with the bearing hub assemblies known as uh, fully floating or semi floating uh, hubs uh, already attached and they're kind of fixed in with the width and length of the axle um, so the, the standard lengths like 48.5 and 52 inch don't really apply here uh, your axle builder is probably just going to ask you you know from hub face to hub face how wide do you want your axle and then that opens up to uh, the third video here I'm going to drop in is uh, talking about wheels and wheel offsets and how to measure your wheels and how to decide what wheels you need 
uh, because once you know kind of what wheel offset you want or what size wheels you want and you have the arches already fitted to your car or you know what arches you want you're able to basically then put all this information together and try and come up with a ballpark figure of exactly what kind of width axle you need which is the avenue I went down I had my arches already installed on the car I got the wheels that I wanted I put the wheels under the car under the arches and I measured between the wheel faces or the, the mounting faces of both wheels and basically came up, came up with a distance of uh, of what I needed for my axle I told my axle builder I needed that and then that's uh, that's the axle I got but we'll cover that in the third video and then as I say the fourth video and that'll probably be the last video in this series we'll be talking about the group 4 axle and uh, what that is and what uh, what components we can get with that anyway sorry for taking so long and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned I'll hopefully get the next videos out pretty soon thanks and take care